It is August 1st, and it is a Thursday, and still Thursday, it's 11.23 p.m., and after I take you through the account and show you my 2000 nearly $2,000 drop in the account in one day, I will talk a little bit more about Apple and the silver gold market, things like that, all right? So first of all, it's a big drop. By the way, this is the video log that takes 30,000 to a million, if you didn't know. Um, today, it doesn't really help that I had such a big drop, but I will recover, that's for sure. So um, let's go into the browser and then um, I'll talk a little bit more about Apple, all right? So first of all, this is what the account looks like right now. Now, I'm planning on at some point adding another grand into the account. Um, but I haven't done it yet. I've had nearly $2,000 drop here from the high. Look, 62258 And then it was just drifting sideways more or less until boom. And what is this big event that happened right here? That caused me to lose uh, $1,500, $1,670. Uh, well, it's a tweet um, of our beloved president of the United States um, and what he announced is that he'll be putting in motion 10% more tariffs on 300 billions worth of goods that we trade with China and so of course um, market sold off and the precious metals went up for many reasons um, well, I don't, I don't generally try not to figure out what, what the reasons are, why things move the way they do, um, outside of their fundamental supply and demand kind of dynamics. But there's a lot of to the story, which i probably not the best commentator to go into it, but it has to do with, you know, Federal Reserve, uh, the Federal Reserve cutting rates, and then not being quote-unquote dovish enough for the president so him setting other things in motion to kind of make him more dovish and make sure that rates do not go up under his administration or, or whatnot now those are just guesses you know uh, just interpretation of what the situation is it might not be the mainstream view everybody has their own opinions and I prefer to actually stay out of politics I'm not really fond of any politician or anybody who tries to control our economy like the Federal Reserve or any politician so really I'm not rooting for anybody in this um, I would prefer market forces set everything um, including our money including rates interest rates on debt uh, including everything really that we do so I prefer that it's free people acting rather than a bunch of uh, you know select individuals whether they be voted for or not um, controlling our everyday lives and influencing them through just the flick of a pen all right so that's my view on everything so I don't want to go into it too much but I just wanted to explain as to why I think this $2,000 drop is happening and because it's happening um, for these kind of in my opinion superficial reasons I do believe that it's going to recover and so I acted upon that and what I did was Huh. What is going on here? This is very important information for your account. Um, all right. Well, thanks. But uh, where are my notifications? It's just messages. Okay. Anyway, this is different. So <laughs> this has changed. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm just surprised about all these uh, changes here. Um, can I see my... Nope. All righty then. So I can't see my notifications. Well, let's go to the history then. Um, I also sold out of my short-term um, treasuries because I'm planning to invest more into Apple with these $3,000 over here that I just sold today. And and speaking of buying Apple, I did buy more. One share at 209.40 and five shares at 210.30. As you can see, I also sold a put on a new company that I'm trying to invest in. It's um, HBI, so it's Haynes Brands, and they hold a um, brand that I think is starting to get popular, which is Champion. It used to be, um, 
a crappy brand back in the day and people kind of used to look down on that brand but now it's it's kind of making a real a little bit of resurgence and I see a lot of people you know online and, and in person wearing it they're dressing up mannequins at the stores with this brand champion obviously this is not financial advice like don't do anything I do just because I'm doing it and um, not that you would anyways but um, just make sure you don't make do your own research and make your own decisions um, so anyways Haynes brand I sold the put so if it drops down to 14 I'll be buying a hundred shares of that brand. It's a uh, so fourteen hundred dollars worth of um, um, HBI here. So as well as the Apple shares that I bought, I also got rid of my short market position. Um, the way I figure, the way I think of it, the reason I got rid of SH here is that like this is probably the worst thing that's going to happen to the market, right? I mean, besides. Powell being hawkish on the rates and going back into a tightening cycle, which he won't because he really got spooked here with a market drop. And then there's another market drop here from Trump, a tweet. And um, I really can't see him going into a tightening cycle anymore. And I think that if this is the worst, right, because the way market works is it's it's for forecasting. It, it's... Um, um, it's future discounting, right? So it look it's forward looking is what I'm trying to say. The market is forward looking, so when it's, as soon as news comes out, the their effects are are already priced in. Like the moment the news comes out, okay. So if the effects of these, by that logic, if the effects of these ten percent uh, tariffs are already factored into the market, this is what the market looks like now, right? So Apple drops from one seventeen to like one oh six or whatever it is, right? So let's actually check here. Uh, Apple, you can see it's down eight hundred dollars. So Apple is at one hundred six and eighty four cents. Um, after digesting that those news, and you can see here even the option play is losing a little bit of money, but that's fine. As long as it stays over two hundred, I'll be a huge winner. On these through these three options that I went over last time, and so I picked up. Actually, I picked up some shares, and to be exact, I picked up six of them, six shares. So, as I was talking about, oh, all right, let's see the drop. So, as as I was saying, um, the market's or discounts here was at $17, and boom, it dropped down $10. The effect is already priced in. Therefore, I figured it doesn't have much downside to go, and so I got rid of the SH. I mean, it might be stupid. The market's pro you know might correct. Just looking at the SPY chart from a technical perspective, I mean, you know, it's been going pretty strong for for three months here, and it might, we might experience a bigger correction than than this. Right, then just 2.21%. <laughs> All right, but um, I think that's not that's not enough for me to worry about. Like I, I just I can't see the market dropping too much further from here. I mean, something would have to happen. Like either either the um, the rates would have to go up, or some catastrophic event. I don't know, war, whatever, or just China completely seizing trade with the U.S. But this this just such small probabilities I don't think it's worth it to explore those type of options so I actually got rid of my SH and I don't really have a short position at the moment except if you count some of my precious metals as being uh, short but um, I do have a lot of cash that I'm ready to employ so I'm ready as you can see these three thousand dollars are ready to go oh sorry excuse me thirty seven hundred dollars is ready to buy some more Apple shares um, or mining stocks if they come down or maybe uranium since it's coming down I actually sold a put another put against chemical here so you see how many options I have against chemical and um, oh, I already showed you that one okay still have forty eight hundred dollars worth of puts and three hundred uh, shares as collateral 
but anyway, what I was saying is that I have $3,700 now just after selling the um, short-term treasuries and I have um, the emerging market bonds that are still waiting to go in and which is this right here, $5,300. So make that $9,000 ready to buy stuff. I think if the market drops substantially, I'll be buying on the way down and I'll really try to quote unquote buy the dip. And um, so I'm feeling pretty good right now, not having a short at all. I did lose some money on that short, but I think the probabilities of the markets going up from here is higher than going lower. Um, you know, absent of like a short, you know, short term, like one or two percent, maybe even three percent correction, which I don't think is going to be a big deal. So um, I'm really looking forward to actually I'd be looking forward to it for just a few percent correction so I can buy more and uh, solidify my positions. Now, I the reason I just can't figure out a reason to buy stuff other than Apple. I'm trying so hard to find a company that I can buy other than Apple, right? outside of mining companies because I do that on the side and I have my cycles going in with the um, scaling scale out methods and all that but outside of mining companies like consumer goods or brands or things like that or staples like I'm really trying hard to find a company to buy other than Apple because I just you know they've got so much going for them I mean it's such a strong brand so much demand you know I, I did listen to the conference call and um, it sounds like they're, they're, things are going well, even when there's so much crap coming into their face, they're still doing well, you know, they're still selling their services, they're expanding stuff, they're introducing stuff, um, they're going to have even more money coming in in the coming quarters with these services, with these hard margin services, and um, it looks like their financials are all in order. Um, you know, they've, they've got cash, they're making acquisitions, they're buy, they bought the Intel uh, um, business there. And, you know, they're probably going to roll out 5G in 2020 um, after all the networks have kind of been built up underneath them. They've got a new phone that's coming out, you know, this um, winter. And although I'm not betting that this phone is going to be it, it might be a little bit of disappointing kind of update when it comes to the hard, um, hardware. I know that they got something um, big coming in uh, on, in 2020 for that season. If it's not this one, it's definitely the next one. There's going to be some kind of groundbreaking technology. They've been uh, hiring a lot of design. I know that Johnny Ives left, right? One of their main design guys. There's all kinds of articles written about that. Some people say he should have gone. Some people say, you know, Apple needs fresh eyes, whatever. It's a positive chance he wasn't there working anyways. He was always abroad in UK. So it could be a positive departure for that guy, even though he's responsible for um, more or less the current design of the very successful iPhone lines and um, I believe iPad and all that stuff. But anyway, they're really stepping up their hiring in the design department and they're trying to get people to work on design, which I believe is the most the most important like core part of Apple is their design. Like they're a... Um, luxury good right they're like a luxury brand kind of like Louis Vuitton or, or something like that with functionality right luxury brand and functionality which I think is really valuable like they're recognized around the world you know one of my clients that they, they said that their their um, um, their kid or their nephew or something like that in a different country somewhere in Southeast Asia wanted for present wanted the phone with the Apple on it right <laughs> Like, the, you know, people don't even know, like, what these phones are, what they represent. They just care about the little symbol because it's so uh, sought after and so valuable in some of these countries with large populations that still can't get their hands on these phones, some of which are countries like India, where um, I'm sure the phone is very popular, but people, the, the majority of people just don't have the means to acquire these phones. So, I don't know. I see just nothing but bright future for the company, like, I really don't want to like him because I have, I mean, I didn't even want the Apple phone at first. Like I was kind of, people bought me um, gift cards to kind of entice me into purchasing an Apple product. And I was like all anti-Apple and 
I do anything but Apple, you know, uh, all kinds of brands. And I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to be stuck into that, into the Apple system. I didn't like it. You know, I have a PC, I don't have a Microsoft computer, but I mean, once I got my hands on the iPhone, that was it, right? I can't go back to another phone. Like I get stuck here because it's just so easy and seamless and you know, the design is good. The functionality is great. Like once I learn my way around the system, um, that's it. I'm stuck in it, which is another benefit that Apple has about it, their products is to get people into the, sucked into the system and now they don't want to leave. Even if there's a better phone out there, you know, the, the iPhone is not technologically currently the most uh, forward phone out there. I'm sure there's other ones that are better. I, you know, I'm sure like Huawei or Samsung have better phones, but it's, I mean, the incremental technology improvement that you have is not worth the experience that you have it on an Apple phone, right? So they've got so much going for them and I'm struggling, like I'm really trying to convince myself not to like the company, not to buy it and do something else. And here I find myself with over 50% of this account, like being tied into Apple in some, some way, you know, and now have 132 shares, 10 of, 100 of them are already pre-sold through the call option, but still, um, I will get to keep them if Apple ends up below $200 on January 17th. So. I might even keep those 100 shares. Um, but anyway, if you find, if you know a brand that I should be investing in, like that you think is better than Apple, more stable, that has so much going for it, where it sucks people in and it stays and it's seamless and it's professional, it's top of the, top of the line when it comes to designer, uh, when it comes to design and it's, um, it's desirable around the world, it's recognizable, like, let me know. <laughs> let me know because... I'm really looking to diversify my consumer company. <laughs> Look at this, man. Look at this. 132 shares, $27,000, right? Where's the account? Let's see the diversity here. Look at this. Almost 50% of the account, right, is Apple. And not only that, but it's more than that because $40,000, so is tied into the uh, uh, stocks, right? Into the option plays. So you can add 40 to 27, and if you add it to the total account, that's um, uh, 67%. 67% of the account is tied into Apple right now. 67. I need new, I need other brands. All right, all right, I think that's about it. I think I've explained enough about Apple, like probably the only thing I haven't explained is why I structured the um, options plays the way I have. And I don't know if I should try to do it. maybe in a different episode because this one's already running pretty long. It's 18 minutes. I've been rambling on for quite some time. So I'm going to leave it right here. I didn't even talk about the precious metal market. Oh, uh, so. The precious metal market, I think, is going up again because of uncertainty. Um, silver is not yet catching up to gold, but I think it will once gold breaks the fourteen hundred and fifty dollar barrier. Um, and we might might have a, a temporary few month correction. I really don't know. I have I still have my account full of gold stocks and stuff like that. But I've, for the most part, I've sold out of gold and silver stocks here, you can see no EXK of sold for a profit already. The only thing that I have left here, this is just single shares just for show. The only thing that I really have is the my wheat and precious metals position, which is not even a thousand dollars at the moment. By the way, if you're wondering, I have these just kind of for show, just to kind of tap myself on the back sometimes because as you can see, I bought this company at uh, $16.21. And I've literally had 129% gain on it. But of course, I've sold along the way, like at an 80% mark, at 100% mark, and I've sold my entire position. This is before I started filming these uh, video logs. But I just want to keep it to show me, to show myself that whenever there's a, a big bottom, to remember to not be afraid and to invest some money whenever there's a big dip because you can result in something like this. All right, so I left a couple shares here. So you can see that 129% gain and also um, the GDXJ, which is the um, junior gold miners. 
also left it just to show me that it's up you know 90 percent since i bought them i've also exited for the most part in that position as well it's just kind of for inspiration to remind me uh, but the only real position i have is uh, wheat and precious metals here which did gain twenty three dollars today but it's nothing compared to apple's fall which uh, hopefully you know i get a chance to accumulate some more sub two hundred dollars per share all right so for, I don't know what to expect from the uh, metals market. Um, perhaps we'll have a few month correction now that we've had this big run up and gold will hover around 1400 and gold, silver will hover around 1550 uh, to six to $16, which is I think the more likely scenario because I think dollar might be gaining some strength soon. But um, if that happens, I'll be buying into the weakness just like I'll be buying into weakness from Apple with the $9,000 that I have available for me to invest. All right, that's it. It's really long. I'm over 20 minutes. Excuse me. I never do 20 minute videos. It's way too long. Enough rambling. All right, that's it. Peace out. I'll see you probably on um okay, maybe Monday. All right. Peace out.